Australian Forum to support Australian defence and industry. Now, Vignette 1 will consist of a demonstration incorporating Bohemia Interactive, Plexus, Simcentric Technologies, uh, with a Force Amphibious Lodgement, VBS-3, VBS Blue, Ascot, Fires FST, Zetasoft, RDS, Flex Air and Leap Motion will, will be employed with various hardware systems in a distributed environment. Standards-based network uh, to demonstrate synchronised effects across land, sea and air domains. Ladies and gentlemen, Vignette 1. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Vignette 1 of DMT 2017. The scenario commences at the geostrategic level, observing macro dynamics such as littoral terrain profiles and maritime manoeuvre routes from a global perspective. Transitioning smoothly from the strategic through the operational to the tactical levels, we focus now on the area of operations in northern Lilliput. Here we have the amphibious ready element with the two RAR battle group embarked, having commenced a ship to shore disembarkation comprising of ASLAVs, M1A1 Abrams and Hawkeye platforms embarked onto LCM-1 Echoes and supported by rotary wing lift comprising of CH-47 Foxtrots, MRH-90 and armed reconnaissance helicopter platforms. A close air patrol has also been established across the AO comprising of F-35s, FA-18s and UAV platforms. The enemy picture comprises a near-peer force consisting of infantry fighting vehicles, armour and anti-air capabilities. This DMT vignette demonstrates numerous standards-based constructive and virtual simulations working seamlessly together in real time. Whilst these are all co-located today for the purposes of the demonstration, it is important to note that these can be geographically distributed around Australia or even internationally as required, obviously a core requirement under JP 9711. Further, live role players can be represented within the environment utilising individual entity geolocation hardware in conjunction with the Cubic CATS metric system. In service with the ADF at CTC Live with refresh every four to eight seconds and demonstrated within this vignette in DMT 2016. Within this scenario, we have VBS 3, the primary synthetic engine for ADF, NZDF, US Army, US Marine Corps, and UK MOD, stimulating VBS Blue IG, Bohemia's full earth rendering IG that we observed at the commencement of this vignette. Supporting these environments is the Plexus Advanced Simulation Combat Operations Trainer, or ASCOT, capability, stimulating via DIS or H HLA and simulating the cross-tell of a complex air, land and sea picture via Link 11 or Link 16 and replicated in the 3D visual environment. ASCOT is currently utilised throughout the US Air Force Distributed Mission Operations, UK Distributed Synthetic Air Land Training Centre, NATO AWACS plus several other militaries globally and is currently under trial with the ADF. Simcentric Technologies accredited FIRES FST Pro application then provides supporting ISR and close air support through an unmanned aerial vehicle enabling battlefield commentary, target vectoring and designation, autonomous strike and battle damage assessment. FIRES FST is currently in use with over a third of NATO, including US Army, Marine Corps and Air Force, in addition to NZDF, and utilised across call for fire, close air support and remote piloted aircraft training use cases. Supporting technologies from Flex Air and Leap Motion enables incorporation of an FA-18 pilot in the loop, utilising VBS Blue IG in a low-cost COTS part task trainer configuration that also incorporates D-Box hardware and an Oculus Rift VR headset. Finally, Zetasoft reconfigurable desktop simulator technology enables a continuously available transition between constructive and virtual environments by facilitating a military transfer of control, in this case demonstrated by an F-35 that is drawn from the Ascot constructive simulation, passed to a human in the loop to conduct a virtual CAD strike, then returned to the constructive Ascot environment. This enables a genuinely distributed and full spectrum LVC training environment with the flexibility to tailor the simulation to the capability requirement, whilst facilitating a plug and play ecosystem of modular software options for the user. At this point, we have transitioned from the strategic environment through to the amphibious ready element inserting the army embarked forces via rotary wing and landing craft platforms into a beach landing site in northern Lilliput, where they are deploying to tactical positions ready for subsequent tasking. We now split to force views of the contributing technologies. 
At the top left, you'll see an ISR of three ASLABs preparing to clear the route for the main body in VBS-3. On the top right is VBS Blue IG, pilot in the loop, flying an F-18 to the south of the AO. On the bottom left is the Rover 5 uh, ISR stream provided by Simcentrix, fires FST, UA UAV pot. And on the bottom right is the Plexus Ascot constructive environment, providing an overall battle picture of air, land and sea manoeuvre and engagement. Whilst the amphibious lodgement continues, the UAV has sighted an enemy standing patrol approximately two kilometres to the west. It consists of two BRDM-2s and a reinforced squad. A situation report is provided to the ASLAV patrol, who is tasked to clear the position. Throughout the manoeuvre, the UAV continues to monitor the Blue 4 ISR patrol and the OP-4 standing patrol, providing battlefield commentary and target vectoring throughout. Indicative of the flexible configuration demonstrated, the lead ASLAV driver and gunner are both human in the loop, who will engage the BRDMs once identified, whilst the remaining two ASLAV drivers and gunners are both AI controlled. This capability is scalable across the simulation environment where a combination of virtual human in the loop entities can be augmented by entity level artificial intelligence and trigger activated events. And finally, supported by a variety of constructive simulation programs based on training need. Placing this within an ADF context, these can then be driven from any simulation node from the battle simulation centres, Land 400 trainers, WETS facilities and platform part task or full fidelity trainers. Now focusing on the tactical scenario, you can observe the UAV being utilised to vector the ASLAVs onto the enemy standing patrol, communicating the range, orientation and tactical disposition of the enemy in real time to the forward commander. This is indicative of the scope of networked simulation training instances to rehearse and refine the synchronisation of platform effects, tactics, techniques and procedures, and C4I supporting concepts. Having manoeuvred to a position with line of sight to the enemy position, the ASLAVs engage the standing patrol, targeting the two BRDM platforms, utilising their significant weapons overmatch. The UAV continues to provide battle damage assessment and target vectoring throughout. With the two BRDMs destroyed, the ASLAV continues to target the OP4 dismounts until the standing patrol is cleared. With the standing patrol destroyed, the UAV identifies an OP4 QRF approximately one kilometre to the southwest, consisting of a single BTR 90. As no joint fires team has observation of the target, and with close air patrol assets not currently available, the UAV is then tasked to destroy the BTR 90 with a Hellfire strike before resuming station over the AO. Once tasked, the UAV strike will be conducted entirely through FIRE's FST AI. However, a human in the loop remote pilot could also be employed if preferred. The UAV locks onto the BTR-90 and activates its laser targeting system with PRF. With a collateral damage estimate completed and approved, the UAV is cleared hot to engage the BTR-90. Airspace deconfliction occurs, ensuring supporting fixed wing and radar wing entities are clear of the UAV movement corridor. Moving off to an initial point to the east, the UAV commences a level attack profile at 5,000 feet, maintaining laser lock on the platform throughout. The UAV is now on its final approach and launches a Hellfire missile at the BTR-90 whilst maintaining laser lock. As you can see, the UAV manoeuvre, ordnance delivery and terminal effects are represented across all environments, including in the Ascot constructive simulation. A key takeaway of this serial is validating the ability to employ, test and analyse new and emerging platforms and effects outlined in the ADF's capability acquisition roadmap through synthetic environment training. In accordance with the 2016 Defence White Paper, the ADF is procuring both the MQ-4C Triton UAS and the F-35 Joint Strike Fighter. Neither capability has reached initial operating capability or can be fully employed in a live training environment. However, we can already start incorporating these capabilities within the ADF force in being and future objective force through LVC simulation based training. The UAV conducts a battle damage assessment to confirm the destruction of the BTR 90, with this conveyed to the task force commander. The UAV, having resumed station over the AO, identifies two OP 4 targets in defensive positions approximately three kilometres inland. 
These consist of an anti-air system comprising of two SA-18 manpads with supporting troops and logistics vehicles and a T-80 main battle tank located within the manpad air defence bubble. A two-phase CAS strike has been ordered, utilising initially the F-35 employing a GBU-12 500-pound bomb onto the anti-air position. Ground laser, ground laser designation will be provided by a joint fires team to the east. This will be followed by an F-18 strike using an AGM-65 Maverick with aerial laser designation from the UAV to destroy the T-80 once its supporting air defence has been neutralised. Using the ZetaSoft RDS, enabling military transfer of control from the Ascot constructive environment, the F-35 is assigned to a human in the loop pilot who will conduct the virtual CAS strike. The remainder of the Ascot entities continue unchanged within their constructive simulation. Airspace is deconflicted between the UAV at 7,000 feet and the strike aircraft operating above 10,000 feet. Throughout, we can see the replication of all entities, munitions, terminal effects and damage models across the Ascot, Blue IG and VBS-3 environments. With the F-35, sorry, with LaserLock confirmed, the F-35 has released the GBU-12. As can be observed, the delivery and terminal effects are visible over all systems simultaneously. With the strike completed, the Joint Fires Team in VBS-3 completes a battle damage assessment to confirm the SA-18 position, SA position has been neutralised, augmented by the UAV Rover 5 feed. With the target destroyed, the F-35 is returned seamlessly to the Ascot environment from the virtual environment. This capability can be repeated continuously using the ZetaSoft RDS, with any and all entities being transferred as required by the training requirements, as has just been demonstrated. With the anti-air position neutralised, the F-18 strike is now ordered onto the T-80 main battle tank. The supporting UAV locks onto the target and activates its laser on a matched PRF code. You can see the F-18 pilot in the loop in VBS Blue IG on the top right screen commencing its approach to target from the south. This uses a combination of FlexAir and Leap Motion software technologies with D-Box and COTS hardware including a VR Oculus Rift that's uh, on display at the Bohemia stand after the demonstration. This configuration delivers a part task trainer that, whilst immersive, enables the pilot to utilise all cockpit functionality throughout and at a fraction of the cost of a full fidelity simulator. Simultaneously, whilst the pilot is manoeuvring the virtual VBS Blue IG platform, we can see the replication of this again in the distributed training environment across both Ascot and VBS3. At this point, we can see that the pilot has locked on to the match PRF code provided by the UAV has been cleared hot and is commencing its approach to target. Once the Maverick munition is released from an altitude of 10,000 feet, this can again be observed in real time in all environments from launch through to terminal effect. And you can just see the munition now being fired in Ascot and moving towards the target. With the strike concluded, the UAV completes the battle damage assessment to confirm the T-80 has been destroyed, after which time the F-18 resumes its close air patrol. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes Vignette 1. This network demonstration has utilised Bohemia Interactive's VBS3 and VBS Blue IG environments, Plexus Ascot, Simcentrix Fires Fire Support Trainer Pro, ZetaSoft RDS, FlexAir and Leap Motion, whilst incorporating a wide range of D-Box and COTS hardware configurations. These technologies have been incorporated within a standards-based distributed LVC training instance, whilst validating persistent constructive to virtual transfer of control that enables significant flexibility in training. Thank you for your time and please feel free to follow up with any of the contributing providers in the next few days with any questions that you have.